absolutely a huge blessing to be able to be here. Amen. Amen. And uh, this happened through basically an introduction through Brother Watts to Pastor Petrick, and ever since we've been not just friends, but brothers. Amen. And I love the continued fellowship and the uh, just the camaraderie, the encouragement. Uh, and, and by the way, folks, that's what we're supposed to be to each other. Amen. 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 Um, the Bible says to compel them to come in. And I believe that we ought to compel each other to keep keep pressing on. Amen. I love that message, Brother Cox. I, I, I love how the Lord uh, opened the door and put you guys exactly where you're supposed to be. Close yeah. the door on the wrong yeah. one and keep the right one over. I, I was sitting there as you, as, as you were given that testimony, thinking about how far the Lord has brought my wife and I. All right. When we first got married, our first car was a 1986 Honda Accord with a plexiglass driver's side window, duct taped in, no door handle on the inside, and to reach, reach back, roll the back, I'm not joking, not, not may pop tires, will pop tires all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> you had to reach back and roll the back window down. Your poor, cute little wife. You talk about humbling. Never complain. Yeah. Had to reach back, roll the back window down, stick your arm out, pull the string. <laughs> Who would do that to, to their wife? Listen, prior to, prior to that, we were scrounging around. You don't know where we came from. You don't know where the, where the Lord brought us from. All right. But there were times where we were literally, and I, I, I making it up. It ain't no glory days, I promise. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But there are days that I'm thankful for. Praise the Lord. And there were days where we were literally scrounging around looking for money to be able to get on the bus to get to to get to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I, well, why don't you get a job? I had three. How about that? Amen? <laughs> and I can remember, I, there were times in our lives where I had to borrow money from my mother. Thank the Lord that I had to had her. Borrow money from my mother to be able to put to get gas money to go to work as I would travel from Dayton, Maryville, Sherville, Crown Point, Gary, so on and so forth, laying five fiber optic lines, and then to have a company that I was working for that didn't pay me as a subcontractor. So what'd you do? I kept working. The Bible says, whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with thy mind. The Bible says there's there's that there, that there's in, in all thy labor there's prosperity. Well, I, and I, what are we going to do? I don't know, but until the Lord shows me something different, I guess I'm going to go to work. But you know that in every one of them, the three different companies in a row, I'm not going to get into all that, going from doing cable installations to satellite installations to fiber optic barrels, leading a crew, leading a crew, and then not getting paid by the company by the time it was said and done. But you know that God was always faithful? Amen. You know that every time that money came through, you know what we would do with 10% of our finances? We tithe. When we when it made when to everybody else it would look like, what sense does that make to tithe? You ain't got no money. Yeah. Now listen, I can't I, I if you can't tell I came from the wrong side of the tracks if there ever was one, amen. Pastor Petrick talking about, you know, dropping out of school. I got my high school diploma at Indiana Boys School. If you don't know, that is a correct a juvenile correctional facility. Did I want to be there? No. Did I want to make the choices to keep myself from going there? No. No, I thought about, you know, in fact, the first time our church had a tent revival, I had told the preacher, just wanted to be all about Jesus. No, don't make it a bunch of testimonies and no, no, nobody needs to know our backgrounds. Just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Christ said, if I be lifted, I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But here's what I realized. Because I've had hesitated to give my testimony when given an opportunity to preach. But our testimony is Jesus. I can look, I can look back at my life and look at the times. I feel like I've lived two lives. And I really have. I've lived the life without Christ that was dead in my trespasses and sins. Amen. And then I've lived a life with Christ and it's a life that's worth living. Amen. 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 We hesitate to, to share our testimonies for any vain glory, and if that's what you're going to share your testimony for, put, put that on put that on the shelf. Amen. Because 
Because once it ceases to be about Christ, it really ceases to be about anything. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got about, I literally have about seven pages worth of notes for 20 minutes worth of preaching. All right. It's not going to happen. Right. Amen. <laughs> He's getting nervous. <laughs> Amen. Um, there's no there's no exemption here. There's an exemption there, Pastor Feature. Amen. There's no exemption here. Just want to touch on a few verses. I'm not going to have you turn anywhere in your Bible because, I, trust me, I could start going and I could preach about five sermons out of out of, out of three three verses worth of, worth of text. There's a story in the Bible where Hezekiah had came in and he had became the king. Daddy was the king, and his father did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. If ever there was a king that had an excuse to come in as a young man and continue in the example that he had and, and continue to, to, to do wrong and take it to the next level, it was him. But instead, he came in, and here's one thing that I want to point out. He came in, and when he became the king, the Bible says that he had taken the, the, the uh, uh, brazen serpent that the people were idolizing. It was a thing that had existed in their lives. It had been there for all of those, li those who were still alive. It had been there their whole life. They were doing wrong. They had built high places. They had they had uh, 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 started uh, uh, had the, the, the groves, and they had started to uh, just start building up the things that were wrong. The things that were wrong in the sight of the Lord. Listen, if it's wrong in the sight of the Lord, well, I don't understand it. God didn't say you got to understand it. Right. Amen? Amen? When I got saved, I'm going to say, when I first, listen, by the way, folks, I'm, I'm just going to have to bounce around through my seven pages of notes. Amen? But when I got saved, listen, when I came to church, I was 19 years old. I was as lost as a goose in a snowstorm. I was a mess. I came into church in the same clothes that I went to the nightclub in the night before. And I came into church with, I had long bangs. They were bleach blonde. I had long hair, and it was bleach blonde. And I had it, I had it, it was not the natural, I had hair. Amen. 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 Now all I got is beard, and it's all gray. Amen. And I feel like I'm too young for it to be all gray. Amen. And, and but, but I came into church. As a 19-year-old, very confused young man facing another gun charge, which is what caused me to be taken, taken, locked away for three years, putting myself in positions I had no business being put in. Nobody put me in those positions. Right. I put me in those positions. Right. We know, nobody in here, you do do you have an excuse to do that which was what's wrong? That's you right. know better. Right. Even being lost, I knew better. That's why when the police came, I ran. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, but, <laughs> but, um, I came to church that, that morning with an ear full of earrings. I was cool, by the way. I was cool and alone. But I, was, but I came into church with an ear full of earrings. Listen, I didn't look like I belonged in church. I didn't dress like I belonged in church. I walked into church with a great big huge marijuana leaf embroidered on my shirt. I didn't, it didn't even, I didn't even realize it until about halfway through the service. And I sat there like this. <laughs> Amen. But the preacher preached and he preached the gospel. Yes. Amen. And he didn't tailor make his sermon for or against me. He just preached what the Lord had put on his heart in his Amen. study. Amen. Amen. And in some areas of his sermon, it stepped on my toes. Amen. Amen. And they needed to be stepped on. Amen. But I heard the gospel preached and preached rightly for the first time in my life. I've been incarcerated. We'd go to Bible study. I'd go because they have donuts and milk and we could get off the block. Amen. We could get to go, you know, away for a little bit. Now I had no... No, I didn't want to go for any preaching. In fact, I probably fell asleep through it. Honest, right. honest to goodness, it was this. Anybody ever watch the Peanuts cartoons? The classroom, womp, 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 womp. That's all it was because that's all they were giving, dishing out. I've said this before. I got baptized three times as a young man, once while incarcerated, twice prior to that, and not one time did anybody give me the gospel. Wow. 
Well, they clapped for me and wrote my name down and felt good and had a, you know, had a big praise. Nobody told me a, a lick of, not a one word about Jesus. If you miss the blood, amen, you miss everything. Amen. 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 Folks, here's what I want to, I need to get to the main topic, and I'll, I'll touch on some of this other stuff, but I don't want to miss the main thing. First of all, let me say this. Love everybody that walks in the door. You don't have to love what they've been doing and what they've been messing with prior to walking in the door. But there's a reason that God sent them to your church. Amen. And be patient with people's growth. Not everybody gro growing in what? Grace. Amen. So give people the space for grace to be able to grow. I thank the Lord that my preacher didn't come to me and get directly right in my face in some areas of my life. He gave me room to grow. Now, he didn't give me an opportunity to serve while I was still messing with that mess. Amen. But you know what he did? He preached the book and he preached the book and he preached the book and he preached the book. And the word of God began to grow inside of me. And my, my faith began to grow. Amen. Amen. You shall know the, 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 the truth and the truth shall set you free. And the more I heard the truth, the more freedom came into my life. Amen. Right. The, Amen. the more I cut the ties uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit in my life to become a free person. Amen. That book will change lives. Amen. Preachers, it is not our job to be everybody's Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So don't put more on yourself than what you're supposed to get. Now, on the flip side of that, we can't tolerate everything that walks in the door. Amen. I'm not putting a homosexual in, in a children's ministry. Amen. 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 But I'll say this. Well, some preachers would disagree with this. I'll walk them to a baptism and baptize them. Amen. If they, if, they, if they put their faith in Jesus Christ. We've got one. I didn't know it was a homosexual. But he gave his testimony for the whole world to see on YouTube. And he, and, and he, in his testimony, got saved, got baptized in our church. And in his testimony, do you know that, you know that God can save homosexuals? Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I'm, I'm, if anybody's against them, I'm, I'm, I'm against that lifestyle, I promise. Amen. Amen. But I'm not against them getting saved and letting God change their life. And that young man gave his testimony and he gave it to he, stepping st stumbling blocks to stepping stones. And that young man gave his testimony for the whole world to see and hear and said in his testimony, I am not for that lifestyle anymore. And he went on to basically to, to preach towards those who were still in that lifestyle. You're in, if you're a Christian and if you're really in Christ, yes. there's supposed to be a transformation. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. I want to emphasize this before the thing goes beat. <laughs> when Hezekiah became the king, he then became responsible for what he would allow, right. for what he would accept, for what he was going to, to do. I can't be responsible for what daddy did. Every man should give an account there of, of, of himself. Amen? Right. And when he came, here's what he, he saw what the people were looking to and what the people were idolizing. They weren't looking to God. They weren't looking to Christ. They weren't looking to the Bible for answers. They were looking, well, you know, we've done all these. We, we, it, this is okay. We can raise this up and this is okay. We can have these high places, but we still got the brazen altar in its place. Amen? And they were worshiping the brazen altar. And I love what, he what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah came, came in and he said, hey, you know what? You're, it, you're idolizing this and not the, not the creator of this. All right. Amen? I'm going to say this, preachers. Listen, I, wait, I know what the Bible says. Christ shed his blood for the church. But when the church becomes more important than the gospel, All right. Amen. All right. amen. amen. I got to say it like, look, folks, listen. It's not about us. Amen. When, when we, the preachers, make it about ourselves, it ceases to be about Christ. Amen. I am not going to come. God help me. I don't ever want to come into church and make it about me. And try to lift myself up and make, make myself more than what God wants me to be. Right. If I cease to lift him up, I cease to be doing things rightly. Right. And Hezekiah came in and he said, whoa, whoa, whoa you know what? This is not what's important. It's the God of this. And so because you're emulating this, and this has become the most important thing to you, we're going to tear that down. And they smashed it into pieces. 
Does anybody know what the word is that that he, that, that that they you that he called it? Nehushtan. He called it Nehushtan. You know what that means? That word means. I've looked it up, studied it out. Here's what that word means. Here's it basically means this: a piece of brass. A piece of brass. You know what he was saying to everybody? Without the God of this being being exonerated and being all glory and receiving all praise, it's just a piece of brass. This is not the most important thing. He is the most Amen. important thing. Amen. And folks, what we have to remember to do is to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. To lift up the cross and to lift up Christ of the cross. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. I want people to be drawn towards the church, not necessarily to grow the church, but to have, the, to, to end up having all of heaven filled. Amen? We Listen, I have to be patient sometimes with people's growth when I don't want to be. Seriously. How long is it going to take? Because I see potential with people. There's people in our church that I see major potential with. I want to be able to slot them in areas of ministry, but because of their lack of, of spiritual uh, growth, discipline, and yieldedness, I can't put them in that position yet. And then hope, hopefully you heard that last word I said, yet. Because by faith, I believe if I keep preaching this book, yes. and if I keep lifting up the Christ of the book, amen, then that, the, their faith is going to grow. And the more their faith grows, the more they'll start to yield themselves and the more usable they'll be. I need to touch on this real quick. When I, when I, when I came to church, I, lived, I every influence, I was bad at good and I was, and I, was and I said that right, I was bad at good and I was good at bad. Man, everything that was right did not come natural to me. Everything that was wrong, man, I could find a way to do it and get away with it for the most part and, and be an exemplary at it. Amen. I was an exemplary student at every, because that's what I studied. And, I'm, and it's not a prideful thing, honestly. It's a foolish thing. Amen. You know, nobody had, nobody had to come tell me to cut out the rock and roll music. You know, my preacher did not come to me and tell me to cut my hair. Holy Spirit did. Yes. God's word, I found in God's word that it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Amen? Amen. I had, since the point I was 11, 12 years old, I had a music collection that I think would rival anybody's. I love music. I still love music. It's like bright music. Right. Amen? Amen? But I love music. And I had literally, I probably had $5,000 worth of cassettes and CDs. Didn't have any records. I've got records now. That's something we have in common. Amen? My wife got me a record player. <laughs> Amen? Now, I look more for preaching than music, but a little bit of both. But anyways, and I went to the Christians. I got two minutes or I'm just, okay. You know what I, what, what, what I, when I got saved, I quit going to the bar. Right. I quit calling the dope man, and the, and, and the, and the dope right. man just quit calling me. That's right. Amen? Amen. I got, you know, multiple people that I grew up with say, oh, it's just a fad. He'll be, he'll be back out here with us before long. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. That Amen. 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 And when I got saved, the one, one thing that I majorly struggled with, and I didn't realize how much of an influence it had on, on my life. So I was driving, Sunday, went to church on Sunday, and I'm feeling on top of the world. Well, I wish I could stay all day. Can we have church again tomorrow? Amen. But instead, I had to go to the, back into the world the next day. On my way to, on my way to the doctor's office, so I'm on my way to the doctor's uh, from work and listening to the same CD player, still got the same stuff in it. I'm on my way to the doctor's office, and I end up getting cut off. And the next thing I know, I'm at a stoplight, literally ready to get in a fist fight with somebody. And eventually, thank the Lord, the cops didn't come, and it didn't actually happen. And I get back in my car, and I'm so upset with myself. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? You've been going to church this long, and you've been, you, you, just a minute, you know, just yesterday, you're on top of the world in love with the Lord. So what is wrong with you? All right. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit caused my ears to tune in to what was playing on my CD player. Uh -huh. And it was as violent and as vile as could be. Yeah. Amen. The Holy Spirit convicted me. I pushed eject, and then I made a decision. I'm getting rid of all of it. And I did. And I'm, I, I don't have time to tell you about that struggle at the pawn shop. B&B &B 
Amen. Amen. Workshop. Back and forth, in and out. I can get money for this, but it ain't right to give it to nobody else. But I'm broke and I need the money. But, you know, and eventually I took it to the church, and me and a couple of my pastor's sons, we burned it in a burn barrel, and they hid a couple of them in their pocket. You know, anyway, but I'm here. I, I, need, I need to hurry. I made a huge mistake. I went to the community Christian bookstore to buy me some Christian music. I'm sitting in the church parking lot on a Sunday morning with my new, you know, rap, you know, Christian CD. Boom, boom. I had a loud system. And I want everybody to know I'm listening to Christian music. I'm almost done. I'll cut it. So, uh, um, um, uh, just the 30, the last minute, 30 seconds. So, anyways, so I'm sitting in, sitting in the parking lot and um, playing my Christian, you know, Christian rap music after church and loud as could be. And somebody walks by my car and they're shaking their head. And I rolled down my window and I turned it down and I said, what? It's Christian. And they said, okay. Yeah. Kept walking. And I needed that. I needed that. And I had to start questioning, why, why do I have to explain that it's Christian? And so... I got rid of that, right. which was my last $30 that I bought it with. <laughs> and a gentleman in the church, God put it on, on his heart. He came and he gave me a, a grocery bag full of, I'm almost humble to say this, Patch the Pirate CDs, Amen. or cassettes, actually, they're all cassettes. Patch the Pirate cassettes, uh, and a whole bunch of good gospel music and preaching. I, I burnt that stuff out. I was like, you know, I was like, man, I could, I could shout when the, when the crowd was saying amen, so on and so forth. Listen, just the, you are not responsible for what, how people receive the gospel and the message. We are responsible to preach it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. 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 